He's got his arm just jammed through her torso, which is um, one way to get a girl's attention. Apparently health and safety dictates that we can't have people freezing during the rose ceremony. Absolutely outrageous. Oh, and he doesn't like the romantic gift. He was like, this rose is shitty. I don't understand what I'm doing here. Hello from the void, it's Rose. Welcome back to my channel and the bachelorette feeling super overwhelmed today because Rosie managed to fall off the radiator, get her leg stuck and like twist it. So now we have to go to the vets to check it's not broken. It's the 23rd of December. I haven't wrapped my presents. I'm meant to be going home today. Anyway, I'm feeling a bit frazzled. So if anyone else is feeling the same way, sending you big love. It's a tough time of year and there is no way to do it right. And I'm trying to remind myself of that. And in the meantime, get this little video up for you all. Um, it is the end of the third week in the bachelorette house which means we are going to be saying goodbye to another one of our lovely suitors there's a couple of guys i'm pretty worried about let me know in the comments who you think at the beginning of the video is going home and if you arrive at the end and yeah let's go watch the last chance saloon and see who makes it out alive Magma and Satine are having a little catch up just before the Last Chance Saloon. I feel like Magma's got to be pretty nervous. Oh, and Satine's tits are missing. Well, always a treat. Because in the last Last Chance Saloon, it didn't go brilliantly. A few people ignored her, someone yelled at her, and I can understand her being a little bit bruised about things, maybe. Also, it's a slightly different crew into the Last Chance Saloon today. So we've got both Midsummer and Emerald making their first appearances in the possibly going home thing. And some of our usual suspects, Marsh included, who I think has been in the bottom every week so far, are safe this week. So let's see how they get on. As ever, they're gonna have five hours to interact freely with Magma in a room with not really much to distract them, but they will not have any prompted interactions. Apparently everyone wants to talk to Pattaya. I guess he has been shut away all week, um, but that's cute. Magma included, she's come over to chat to him. They're having a little group conversation. Apparently Emerald and Midsummer have never met. They've just met for the first time and got a bad sentiment. Not sure how that's happened. I thought at this stage everyone had met, but apparently not. I will say at this stage it's going better than last week. People are actually talking to Magma. I don't think anyone talked to her for the first three hours last week. Although it's only Pattaya, Satine and Carnelian. I think Bucky, Midsummer, and Emerald in a separate conversation. So I might just yeet Satine out of the room. We don't actually need her here. She was here for moral support more than anything. Oh, and it looks like Magma is possibly sick. Yep, she's got stars going around her head. I think we should, yeah, we still got some medication. I bulk bought a bunch because everyone was sick this week. I didn't end up showing it, but people had all sorts of fun diseases and honestly, it was super stressful. Hopefully this will sort her out and we can get on with the salooning. Apparently she's not sick and taking the medication has messed with her. Well, she is sick. Why do you do this to me? Oh well, it doesn't seem to be affecting her mood, so we will just leave her. Unfortunately, taking the medication has dropped the conversation and now everyone is just talking around her. Or in fact, Pataya's playing his phone games through her. He's got his arm just jammed through her torso, which is um, one way to get a girl's attention. I feel like if someone thrust their hand through my chest, I would be like, mm, babe, no. But Emerald has stepped up. He's gone for a cheap kiss. Are you gonna flirt for me, Emerald? Oh, and now there is a group conversation, Carnelian, Midsummer, Emerald, and Bucky. Pataya, you wanna, you wanna get in on this? Apparently, apparently no. At this point, I have genuinely no idea who's going out, because obviously there's lots of things that go into that decision, friendship, romance, skills, and I never look at the skills or the relationship figures until I finish the last chance at which point I pause it and then I go do the maths immediately after that point, that's the cutoff. So yeah, until I see those skill points particularly, I have no idea who is likely to be in the bottom. Obviously last week, Bucky did come in first place overall, so it's likely he is safe, but any of the other four honestly could be for it because they have had not the easiest rides. Although Carnelian did do a lot of interacting with Magma, so I wonder if that has helped him out. He is doing the classic bird hands. I feel like this entire competition has been sponsored by bird hands. And Emerald really, really keeping the hugging train going. Everyone else is just chatting. Although Pattaya, I think, just talked about planning and everyone was like, well done. It's good to have a plan. Oh, and we are on electrocutions. Oh, literally it's electrocution hour. It's happy hour, buy one, get one, electrocution free. 
not a party I would be attending, but we accept it. I'm not sure what it says about me as a player who doesn't really enjoy mischief or this challenge that I'm just glad anyone is interacting with The Bachelorette because that has too often not been the case. So thus far this last chance noon has actually been pretty pretty exemplar, except I will say for Pattaya who just will not get off his phone. Oh, buddy, you okay hon? I think I might need to delete those pipes on the back wall before next week because for some reason they count as art and people go over and view them and then they stay behind the bar for the conversation which Carnelian has done and honestly it's super weird and I don't like it so we might have to undo that. Why is the game program like that? Oh, Bucky and Midsummer now despise each other. They fully, full on hate each other, and Emerald is also losing relationship. Midsummer really does not have a skill for getting on with anyone other than Magma, and I have serious concerns about that. That is not a warm thing in a partner, although he's just got a good, a good sentiment with Carnelian. I don't know really when these guys got to know each other. I definitely feel like having spent all week alone with his robot emerald is just craving human contact of any sort he's very much you will stand with me please stand with me don't make me go and talk to my robot again honestly i think all of the parents of these boys can be quite proud of their kids they have not let things go they are all participating in the conversation and that is as much as we can ask of them i really wish connie would come out from behind the bar do we think he's doing some sort of love is blind thing or sending a mind signal to Bo? Like what's going on here? Maybe he smells bad, which makes me realize no one actually is really stinky or has peed themselves since we came in here, which is the first time. So genuinely we are going up in the world, even if things are now descending into just people yelling at each other. No one still has yelled at Magma though, so I do give points for that as we come into the last 15 minutes in the saloon. Oh, Midsummer's decided to come in and try and get some one-on-one -on -one time in Emerald. Dude, that was kind of impressive, but why do you have three bottles of oil in your pocket? That's a, a weird thing to have. Emerald and Pattaya definitely haven't thrived in isolation, whereas I actually kind of feel like Midsummer might have missed being in the pods. He doesn't get gel well with others. And Bucky and Carnelian honestly do okay wherever they are. And the results will now be calculated. Time is up. We have had a relatively calm saloon and Magma is now waiting to make her choice. We've had to move the rose ceremony indoors because there's a blizzard and apparently health and safety dictates that we can't have people freezing during the rose ceremony. Absolutely outrageous. I love this dress on Magma, it's so pretty. It was recolored by uh, Cryptid Games and I just am obsessed with it. I'm not gonna lie, I was actually very surprised by the end result this time. So I feel like Magma would definitely want to have a proper chat with her friend about what she's gonna do and why. And Satine is just telling her that she has to go with her gut and that she knows she'll make the right choice. And if she makes the wrong choice, she'll still be there for her because she's her friend and they are both gorgeous. So there we are. We are coming down the rose petal aisle to our little Christmas ceremony area, which honestly I'm pretty pleased with. I think it looks so pretty. And we're gonna give out roses to the safe guys first in order of score. And first up, and it's not a conspiracy, is Marsh. He made the most of his first week out of the pods. He did a lot of skilling, a little bit of interaction, and then obviously he did win the date challenge, securing himself the first one-on-one -on -one date of the season. And while there perhaps haven't been any big fireworks, he is just slowly and surely building that relationship which we love to see. We can see here that he has the smitten sentiment for magma and it is reciprocated. He has got 45 friendship points, 9 romance points and it puts him in first place out of all the contestants this week. Next up just behind is Fluff, definitely most improved from dead last to second overall. He did a really good job, although he was stuck in the pods, he won that date, he really made the most of it and he has been cranking up the romance, I'm sure his mother will be very proud of him. He also did some good skilling and managed to get a sentiment from Magma closer from happy memories along with his 57 friendship points. Go Fluff! Next up is Indy. Again, most improved. This is kind of stacked in order of who flirted the most with her. Among the safe guys, and Indy has accepted his flower. Would you like to give Magma one back? Excellent, very polite of you. Congratulations, you survive another week and another person who has turned it around. He has now got 50 friendship points with Magma, no sentiments, but 
a solid performance honestly for Indy which means last up of our safe boys is Lil Shino he has maybe not made so much romantic progress with Magma but he is still doing pretty well I would say bobbing along in the middle at the moment and he has also returned the rose I'm really hoping that everyone will it won't make a difference but it might like bump the romance score up a little bit uh, and Shino finished with 49 friendship points, so just behind Indy. No new sentiments for him, but again, solid performance. Which now brings us over to the Danger Boys. The first man safe is last week's winner, Bucky. Now, honestly, Bucky is kind of hanging on by virtue of being her best friend since week one, but will that last? The others are catching up. Oh, and he doesn't like the romantic gift. He was like, this rose is shitty. I don't understand what I'm doing here. He has returned the rose, but they got minus hearts for that. And that is a little bit concerning for Bucky. He is gonna have to do something next week because the others have caught him up friendship wise. He has six. 61 points but nothing else has really changed since last week and he's the only one that hasn't been stuck in a pod yet next to be safe is robot boy little emeralds now oh look look at this festive color palette that's so pretty they look great together in this room he has fortunately accepted his rose he didn't do much honestly except for talking to his robot but he does have a solid friendship with magma to back him but again fluff has now caught him up so the playing field is very much open he's got 60 friend points and he has gained the adoring sentiment about magma which is cute so hopefully we will see more from them next week magma is looking awkward because it is squeaky bum time who is the last person to be safe it is in fact midsummer now midsummer definitely didn't benefit from being in the house he did a lot less skilling he didn't really interact a huge amount with magma and he didn't win the skill challenge or win a place on the date challenge so it's definitely been his worst week so far and the scores definitely reflect that so he's gonna have to find a new technique he has got 58 friendship points with magma and a closer from happy memories sentiment but that is fading and next week is going to be tough Magma is definitely sick. She's dizzy and queasy and maybe part of it's because she doesn't want to make this decision, but it is time. The bottom two, to my surprise, honestly, Carnelian and Pattaya. I wasn't surprised to see Pattaya down there, but Carnelian, I was super surprised. I thought it was going to be Midsummer and Pattaya, but it was not. And I feel like Magma is explaining to Carnelian her decision because in fact, the last rose, shockingly, is going to Pattaya, who hates it and is like, you're not interested in me, are you giving me a rose? And he has given her a rose back, so I guess he's slightly invested in the process, but this decision doesn't like sit super well with me because I definitely feel like Carnelian put in more effort, but what it really came down to, and I think what Magma will be telling him, is there's just no attraction between them. They're building a really good friendship, but it is just a friendship. And I think, given that she knows how he can be flirty, like he was with Bo, that has played a part. It actually came down to a couple of different things so Pattaya has a lower friendship with Magma but he got a lot more skilling done versus Carnelian he got seven points Carnelian only got four and also Carnelian has been battling against his very unattractive perception for the entire competition so those two things in combination with the fact that there are only six friendship points between them just meant that it was not Carnelian's day and I am honestly devastated because his aesthetic I adore he reminds me of all my sims 3 sims and I mean that in like the best possible way he's such a cutie but he is not a cutie for Magma. I guess the silver lining though, is that he can head off, maybe track down a certain curly haired blue man and start something new. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't look devastated exactly, but this is it. This is the end for Magma and Carnelian Lantern. He was good at chat, possibly a saboteur, almost certainly fancied Bo more than Magma and honestly the softest of boys. Thank you so much to Dragon Plumbobs for making him for me. I have loved having him and I'm so sad to see him go so quickly but was what the spreadsheet said and as ever i'll pop that up at the end of the video which is pretty much here now thank you so so much for watching i hope you all have the loveliest christmas and i will see you in the next video love you bye